Hi, my name is Miles, and in this video taken from my color grading course, we're looking at the color tool change Apple did to Final Cut in 2019. Now we've had color masks for a while, and the course itself goes into detail on how and why to use them, but let's look at the change. Roll back to October 2019 and I'd just rendered 50 videos or so for this course and before my Mac could even cool down and catch its breath, Apple released an update to Final Cut Pro including a change to the colour tools. Typical. That change was to expand on the colour mask tool to help you refine the colour that's picked up in that mask. They very much geared this new update to handle newer hardware, but we're going to focus on this colour change specifically. As a quick reminder, a colour mask is used to isolate the changes made by an effect, for example a colour change, so that the change you want is only applied to areas in the image with the colour you specify. So as a quick example of what we used to do with masks, say you wanted to make a change to this image but leave the purple areas purple so you've still got the smoke, what we could have done was add a colour wheels effect and add a colour mask to that and then try and drag out areas of the mask to just isolate the purple and you can see what's included in your mask here because it remains in color and obviously there's still quite a lot of smoke not included there so we can hold shift to get a plus sign to further add to the mask and then if you wanted to take anything out you could hold alt to remove some of the some of the colors that you've picked up so i noticed there i was getting some jeans so i'm going to try and remove the jeans but i'm going to go back to shift and add more of the smoke in and you can see it was a very difficult job in this particular instance to separate the jeans from the purple smoke. So all we used to really have was this softness slider here. And if we hit view masks, you can see the white areas were picked up by this mask. So I'm going to want to bring the softness down in this case so that just the smoke is white. But as you can see, I'd gone too far with the mask and I couldn't get a good sample of just the purple in that case. As far as this example goes, what we would have done was gone to the outside of the range and desaturated the lot so that we just had the purple saturated and the rest desaturated. And that just shows how bad this mask was. This was how it's worked for a little while now and that's what they're now calling a 3D mask. If you imagined the hues depicted in the cube like this, by selecting a color in the image, we highlight a particular hue in this cube. And then by adjusting the softness, we either get more of the colors around that in a 3D space, or if we decrease the softness, it obviously restricted that to the specific hues that were clicked. So what's new? On first glance, it looks like just this type drop down menu here. But when we change this to HSL, which stands for hue, saturation and luminance, we can refine that range of the mask by manually adjusting the color hue, the saturation, or the brightness of the colors in your mask. This is way more precise and appropriate for professional work. So I will take another sample again, just to show how it works. And then instead of using the shift or alt keys to try and add and remove from that mask, I'm gonna use the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. So it's already picked a selection for us because of the little area that I picked. We've got this hue of purple here this amount of saturation and this level of brightness. That's not yet a very good mask, so we'll have to play around with these. So the top of these controls here defines the range of, in this case, hues, and the bottom triangle here determines the softness. So it will roll off that range smoothly into the colors around it. Holding the option key while you drag it adjusts the range slower. So this is whilst holding the option key down, and this is without holding the option key down. You can move the whole section by grabbing within the range itself, and you can disable the parameters here with the tick boxes to completely ignore either the hue, saturation, or luminance. So let's say, for example, we wanted to pick all of the luminance levels of the purple and this saturation that we've picked. We could just untick this box here and the mask will treat it as if we're using all of the luminance levels. Let's park the idea for now and we'll come back to that later. So this is similar to how it works in Premiere Pro for masks and I personally believe that this has closed the gap almost entirely between the two programs. Coming back to this mask of the purple here, it's just a case now of playing with these parameters, the ranges that I've picked here to try and isolate this purple color. So something like this has meant that I can completely exclude the jeans now. And whilst I still probably am missing a 
few areas of purple, that's a very good key compared to what we got before. Where this is more likely to be usable is to mask the skin tones out so that you can make a change to them alone or the rest of the scene and not the skin tones. This is the example shot we looked at to illustrate the shortfalls of the old style of the mask. We just couldn't isolate this gentleman's skin from the background and treat them differently because the background color was too similar to the subject. We kept picking up parts of the shirt, this background here, and parts of the wall as well. You can refine any mask, color mask with a shape mask. So we could have added this to further refine the key. But as you can see, this is a round shape and there's not much you can do to contour it around somebody's face like that. You can make it square, but obviously that's not gonna help. So in the end, we would still have picked up parts of the wall in the background and bits of the shirt. And this really was a shortfall of how the masks used to work. So let's try this again. I'm gonna remove this colored wheel change entirely and I'm gonna add a new one. And this time we're gonna pick a color mask, but this time of type HSL. And as I haven't sampled anything at the moment, it's showing us all the hues, all the saturations and all the luminances. But if I just select a bit of the skin, so we've got a start in place to begin with, something like that. By default, we can still see we've got areas in the background, the wall and the shirt that we don't want. But now if we try and refine this even further and saturation and luminance tends to be the, the refinements that give me the most joy. I'm gonna try and tease the range using the top triangle and then soften it with the bottom to try and isolate the skin tones away from the wall itself. And this is just gonna be a case of trial and error. Now this is looking a lot healthier and I can scrub through the clip to make sure that that key stays fairly consistent. I'm much happier with that. Now there were bits of his beard and hair that we didn't include. So whatever changes I make now within here will result in a difference between his face and the beardy hairy parts. But I've seen examples in Hollywood where, where they've tried to do a different grade to the background to the skin and that background grade has leaked into the skin. So even if we're doing that ourselves inadvertently, then we're in good company. So now that I've got that key, let me apply parts of the other grade that I would have wanted to do anyway. We've added a bit of contrast with the color curve. Then I added some saturation through the color wheels just to get a neutral look like this. Then I want my color change that I'll be doing with the key to come next. And at this point, I'll also add the look that I know I'm gonna to want to use, which is just a film look. That begins to give us an orangey look in the skin tones. And at that point, let's dive into the color mask that I did to make a grade that differs according to whether it's skin tone or background. So we'll go on to outside of the mask. And just for reference, this is the mask. So we're now dealing with all the areas which are black. And then what I'll do is just to add a bunch of teal. So we're gonna go for a teal and orange look. If you remember in the tutorial, we were looking at trying to match a, a Hollywood look. I know it's a bit cliche, but just for the purposes of demonstration, I'm gonna add a bunch of teal to the mids, some to the shadows as well. And then to counteract that, because the mids is such a big range in Final Cut Pro, I'm gonna actually add some warmth so that the lighter areas of the background don't look teal as well. So something like that has added some teal to the scene. Then if we go inside, the look that we added has added some orange to the face already, but I might bring the mids down to add a bit more contrast, maybe the highs up to make the skin pop a little as well. And then I might just play around the saturation a little bit. I don't want it to be too orange. Something like that is a bit more natural. And there we go. The mask has meant that we've been able to make a change to his face and the background independently. Now pumping the teal into the shadows has meant that even the black areas now have some teal. So as always, I'm going to clean the blacks by desaturating the extreme shadows. And you can see the difference that that's making to this pipe work in the shot in the background. And to finish this off, if we just have a quick look at the video scopes, we can see the waveform only comes down to about four or five and that's given us a bit of a faded look when it comes to the image the blacks aren't true black now that's going to be a personal preference thing whether you want to fix that or not but in my case i did want to just try and bring the shadows down a bit further at the near bottom stretch them out so that they did now touch the bottom or close to it but without making the whole scene too dark going from that slightly faded look which might be something that you want 
or this to a bit more of a contrasty, moody, truer black scene. So you've seen how it makes it possible to apply different effects to different colours within your scene. This is also a powerful tool when you want to apply changes to just a range defined by either the brightness or the saturation. Let's look at this little clip here to show you what I mean. So if we add a colour wheels effect and I'm going to add a colour mask. In the HSL type colour mask, we can now deselect the hue and the saturation ranges so that we can just make our changes to the scene based on how bright the part of the scene is. So for an example, let's bring the upper range of the luminance down. And if I click view masks, the white areas show me which area this mask is picking up. And I can drag the top of the top triangle down to decrease the range so that I can deselect parts of the skin and the foreground and the background, which are brighter than the rest. So I'll kill this range a little bit more and I'm gonna feather that so that the background is mainly picked up. And now we've got a mask which is targeting the shadows within the scene. So if I then, as I'm on the inside the mask, if I then add some teal to the shadows, just quite subtly like that, you can see in one really quick way, I've added teal to the shadows and I know it hasn't impacted the skin. If I toggle this on and off, you can see that's just added a, a different color hue to the image. This is so good. I used to have to duplicate the clip, move it above the other one, use a luma keyer on that one and then make the changes on there. But this does it all on the same clip. This also addresses one of the weaknesses of Final Cut Pro compared to something like DaVinci Resolve. So for me, these color wheels are a little bit too broad. So for example, if I adjust the shadows on the luminance on the whole clip, you can see that even the values up towards the 75 IRE line have been affected even though I'm only adjusting the shadow slider. Now with these new color masks, the HSL one, you can isolate the luma range entirely and then you know exactly which part of the shadows you're about to deal with. And in this case, what I'll do is I'm going to desaturate the very dark parts. So I'll desaturate the blacks just like that. And I know that this is the luma range that that's affected. So the very black parts of my image will now be black, but the teal still remained into the darker areas. It's a subtle change, but I can see the very dark areas here were picked up by the mask. And now I've got the confidence to know that they have been desaturated. And of course, you don't have to just use the saturation with this. You can isolate a luma range and change the colors in that range if you like. This really does open a bunch of possibilities. Okay, that was a roundup of the 10.4.7 change and how you might use it. 10.4.8 is actually also out, but this just addresses bugs and improves reliability in certain aspects. Don't forget it's good practice to wait to update Final Cut Pro until your current projects are all done and only when you're sure that any plugins that you rely on are also compatible with the new version. Thanks for watching the video. No doubt Apple are going to make a change to Final Cut Pro the second I hit render, so you might hear from me again soon.